So let's take a look about, let's just start, start with some warm up here. Let's take a look at how we find the surface area of a, a pyramid. So first things first, that's really one of the things that we talked about earlier this on your test. The formula was big B plus one half times the perimeter times the slant height. So using that formula, I want you to go through and find the answers for one, two, three, four, and five uh, in just a moment. You can pause the video and then start it back up when each one's had time, about, time to finish the problems. All right. All right, so let's kind of work our way through it. So to find big B on the first one, it's going to be, they're all, these are all rectangular pyramids or square pyramids, so it's always going to be base times height. So in this case, our big B is equal to 6. So we're going to say 6 plus 1 half the perimeter. So 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 is 10 times the slant height, which is 7. So what I'm really doing is going to say 6 times th plus 35. So that one's a total of 41 inches squared. If I work my way to the next one, it's the same formula, but big B this time is 25 plus 1 half times the perimeter of 20 times the slant height of 7. So we're going to add all that together, and we end up getting 95 square inches. Moving to number 3, where we don't have pictures, but we still have everything we need, a square pyramid, side length of 25. So 25 times 25 is 625 plus our 1 half times our slant height or sorry, times our perimeter, which is 100, times our slant height, which is 20. So really what we're looking for, get the final answer, 1,625 uh, centimeters squared. Moving on to number four, same surface area of a square pyramid once again. So we have a slant height of eight and a side length of five. So that gives us our area of our base being 25 plus one half times 20 times our slant height of eight. So together we end up getting 105 and that's going to be yards squared. And our last one we'll do here at the bottom. Same formula, big B. So big B in this case again is a square pyramid with side lengths of two, so our slant, our big B is four, plus one half times the perimeter, so four, four, four times two is eight, times a slant height of three. So we get our final answer, we go half of eight is four, that's 12, plus this is 16 uh, square inches. Okay, so let's, get us a little review, get our brains a little warmed up. So now we're going to move on to our statistics unit. Um, and really what we're going to look at is, be, is the mean today. We're going to look at the, one of the first and most basic measures of central tendency, the middle term, the cent measures of the center. One of those measures is called the mean. Okay. Another name for it you might have heard in the past is your average. I mean, that's pretty much how we get your grades. We take a mean of all your scores. Now, in math, we do a weighted mean, so certain areas are worth more than others but we find the average of your grades. So our entire goal is just being able to figure out what's the middle, what's what all those numbers added up and figured it out. So we've got a couple words we've got to get out into the way. The first one is the measure of center. There are five, four measures of center that we're gonna look at. Um, we've, got, we've got the mean, we've got the median, we've got the mode, and we've got the mid-range. We really don't spend much time on the mid-range, but we are gonna take a look at mean, median, and mode, and we will look at range. That's not a measure of center, that's a measure of spread and we'll talk about that later. Our mean is the first one we're going to look up, is the average of the sum, so we got sum, so total, add it all up, of the total numbers divided by the number of terms. So you'll see with that, that's pretty much how we do the work. Average really is just the same basic idea. It's a single number taken to represent a list of numbers. So if you have your average, so like batting average, if you play baseball, or your shooting percentage, okay? These are ideas of your average score. Your average speed you throw up, uh, a fastball, or if you're running your 40, it's your average 40 speed. All of those things are things that you take average and you'll see those all around um, sports and well, life. Um, so mean is exactly what I said. So the idea behind mean is it is the measure of center. If I take all my numbers, think of it this way, it's kind of like the balance point. If all my numbers are here, my mean has to be dead center middle. Okay. So to do that, what I'm going to do this is I'm going to add up all my numbers and then divide by however many numbers I have. That's going to give me the number that is in the middle of the entire data set. That's the balance point. The half of my numbers are to the right of it, half of my numbers are to the left. So it gives me this idea. That's a, one of the most common measures of center. It may not be the most predictable and reliable because we'll have to see if there's some crazier numbers as we talk later on in the unit. But before we do that, we've got to kind of come up with the idea. So if I want to find the mean, I can find means of pictures. I can find means of number lists. In this case, most of the time we translate it to numbers. 
So if we find the mean number of representatives for the four states shown below, okay? So Tennessee, we see it has nine members. Kentucky has six. Virginia has 11 members of the US Congress and Louisiana has six as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add those all together. Now, I'm gonna do this without a calculator because really we don't need it with such small number of sets. You will get to use a calculator, but not until you need it. So I would rearrange and think, okay, nine times 11, nine here, plus Jason. 11 and six plus six. That gives me 20 plus 12 is 32. And then I've got four numbers in my data set. So I'm gonna divide it by four and the average number or the mean number is eight representatives. And I'm just gonna refer to that as reps of Congress, in Congress. So that's how many we'd have it. So take a look and I want you guys to do the same thing. This pictorial chart shows the recent number of electoral votes for a selected states. Find the mean number of electoral votes for each of these four states. Be sure you pause the video and if you have questions, feel free to start, when you're done, start the video up and I'll go through the answers. All right, so we take a look at Tennessee. Tennessee has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven electoral votes. Kentucky this time has eight electoral votes. We have Virginia at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen electoral votes. And then South Carolina at eight. No, you're going, but Mr. Maloney, those states had only less reps. That's because the electoral votes include the senators from each state. So you get the same amount of electoral votes you get as you have representatives to the U.S. Congress that includes senators. So that's why these numbers are different, just in case you were wondering. So again, I'm going to put my numbers together so I can make it a real quick, easy add. 11 and 13 is 24. 24 plus 16 is 40. And then again, I'm going to divide by 4 because that's how many number of states I'm looking at. And that shows that the average number of electoral votes is 10 electoral votes for that for these, sorry, votes for these four states. All right, let's keep going. All right, now we can also do the same thing with a dot plot. A dot plot is just the same idea. Instead of it being a graph or a picto chart or a bar graph, it's just a different kind of note. So every dot stands for another number, a, ver a rep repetition of that number. So what I really have is 45, 45, 47, 49, 50, and 52. So I'm gonna add all those numbers up. And you can use a calculator in this case, but I'm gonna break them up into easier numbers just to work with, just like I said again. Together, those are 90. Together, these are 102. Together, this one's gonna be uh, 96. So now when I add those up, it's just a little easier. I've got 186, 286, 288 is my number. And I'm gonna divide it by six. So again, I can use a calculator, but really there's no need yet. So it goes into it four times, 24, subtract, I have 48. It goes into it, so the average number, the average high temperature at this time in Little Rock is 48 degrees. And we're assuming it's Fahrenheit because this is the US and we don't do Celsius temperatures in. If it's 48 degrees Celsius, it's really, really hot. So, pardon me, let's take a look at, let's have you guys give one a shot. So take a second and figure out uh, the average score of this one. Now, I am going to make one little note. You'll see my chart. This would be 154. So in between it would be 155. So take a second, pause the video, and come up with the average score for Joel's bowling over the last two weeks. All right, so let's bring this together again. 147 was his first score, 150, 154, then he has two scores at 155, 155, another 155, no 156, 157, 165, and a 170. So this is where I'm gonna probably take my calculator and because the numbers are getting larger, might as well go ahead and use the calculator. So I hope you guys were doing that. This is what I mean by, hey, if I don't need my calculator, I probably should get used to not using it a little bit. So if I added all those numbers up together, though, I get 1,253. And I divide this by how many terms? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scores. So I'm going to divide it by eight. And again, calculators are great. It says that his average score is 156 and 625 thousandths. So probably his average score is between 156 and 157. And we kind of look, that happens to be where a lot of the numbers are located. 
and we'll talk more about that as we explore different measures of central tendency and mean absolute deviation and things like that as we look through the unit. So, all right, let's take a look at another type. All right, so another dot plot. Now, baseballs are notoriously low scoring games, so there's really no need to use our calculator on this one. Find the mean number of runs, runs in the series. So first game, they got one, second game, they got three, the third game, they got four, and another game, they got four. So don't need to add this up. This ends up being 12. 12 divided by 4, so the average number of points scored or runs scored is 3 runs per game. Okay, go ahead and figure this one out for the average number of pets owned by Jennifer's reading group. All right, so this one had a little trick in it. We have a 0. We still have to count 0 as one of our numbers. 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4. So adding all those together, I get 12 again, but this time I have six members. So the average number of pets is two pets in this group. Okay, some of you might have more or less. Okay, so now we've got slightly larger numbers. This is where you're going to break out your calculator. You're going to look at it and see, okay. So if the number of minutes Marianne spent talking on her cell phone each month in the past five months are 494, 305 or 2, 486, 5, 690, and 478. Suppose the mean for all six months is this. How many minutes did she speak the six months? Well, that's where we're going to have to start working our way backwards. So if you think about mean, mean right here is the total, is the answer to the total divided by the number of months. Okay? So in this case, it's number of months. So if we work this problem, we know some of this information. We know the mean is 532. We know, we don't know the total number of minutes, but we do know the number of months. We know most of them. We knew all of these numbers, so I'm going to take a second and add all these up. 494 plus 502 plus 486 plus 690 plus 478. So we know the total of that is 2,650 2, minutes plus one more, so we'll just call that x. Okay, x is let x be our six months, sixth month, okay, minutes. So if I work my way backwards, I can kind of start thinking. There's a set of parentheses up here, so I can't do anything with that. How do I get rid of divided by six? Well, I know how I do that. I subtract, or I'm, I'm sorry, I, multi I multiply, so I multiply both sides by six, and I'm gonna get a total of Sorry, I typed it wrong. Hold on one second. 532 times 6. I get 3,192 minutes is equal to 2,650 plus another number. Well, it's a one-step equation now. How do you get rid of a positive number? You use a negative. 2,650 subtract it from both sides. Don't you love when our equations come back for us and help us understand it? So we're going to subtract 2,650 from 3,192. And we find out the sixth month, she, re she spoke for 542 minutes on her cell phone. All right, take a second and practice. Try to figure out this next one. The, the score of her game for seven games is 92, 102, 88, 76, 78, 98, and 101. If the mean uh, for eight games was 90 points, what was the score of the ninth game? Okay. Pause the video, and then you can restart it when you're ready to talk about the answers. All right, so first thing we do is we go, okay, what do we know? Same, uh, same information from our last lesson, from our piece. We've got mean and we've got total, and instead of number of game months, it's number of games. So we know our mean was 90. We know that's equal to eight games. I went ahead while, you all were, while the video was paused and added up the seven games I do, did know was 635 plus X. X is the eighth game. Okay. So now I'm going to work my problem in reverse. 8 times 90, so I multiply both sides by 8, is 720, which is equal to 635 now plus x. And I subtract 635 from both sides. So that gives my final score of that game. x is equal to 85 points. Not one of their lowest scoring games, but somewhere a little bit more towards the bottom. Okay? All right. 
now that we've done all of those, here's your last little bit. I want you to generate a set of numbers with no more than eight data digits that has a mean of four and a half. So this time, I've given you the mean, I've given you the data points, we're working on the same problem. This time, you have to come up with eight different points, eight different number points. And I'll take a look at this when I return on Monday. If you have questions, please be ready to come see me Monday morning, and I'd be happy to help you. Y'all have a great weekend.